So what the hell is this game? I never claimed to be Monomon the teacher, but I've got a few theories about what's happening in this here town. Firstly though, my incredibly delicate brain has pondries to satisfy. So, what on God's brown earth is this monstrosity? What? Wait, what? Um... I don't like that. What is going on there? Wait, okay. Um, just gonna ignore the fact that that happened at all. I think a big part of this world Bugman is in is the lack of sunlight. I have yet to see anything relative to sunlight, and the closest is of course Crystal Peak. The absence of light is an odd thing to latch onto, but I believe I remember seeing several references to the light in places, and the deeper Bugman goes, the larger and more wild enemies get. Ooh, 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 boy, you are feisty. Perhaps the Crystal Peak amplifies some kind of mesmeric force that brainwashes the workers there. That could be the light. The crystals also seem almost parasitic. I had to do that. It was necessary. A parasite certainly fits with the unified will to brutalize Bugman as he walks down the street. I'm not sure, because then how did crystals get everywhere to take over the city and outlying areas? What I do know is that Hellenest was a technologically advanced techno-magic civilization. Just look at the doors, elevators, soul sanctum, and mining machines. Oh yes, this is excellent. I'm washing myself of sin and filth. Maybe these machines use crystals, and they may have amplified aforementioned mesmeric force everywhere outside the mines. So this light must have brainwashed everyone into killing each other, like the workers in Crystal Peak. Now, delving into Deep Nest, I learned that the Mantis babes were guarding it. But why? It can't simply be that the enemies within are horde creatures, although I won't dispute that fact. the conviction that they were guarding a magical danger, not a physical one, or both, conveniently. For one, what is this horror from the deep? For two, the further in the deep nest Bugman ventures, the more arachnid every creature gets. So there's a clan of some kind, which is shown to be true. This clan was driven out due to a duty owed by their buxom bug babe, the big wiggly one, the one I poked. So, what's the light got to do with big buxom bug babe? We cure big buxom bug babe of life using the dream nail, so Bugman metaphysically manifests in other creatures' minds whether they're dead or alive. Oh no. This suggests the light discussed is linked to the dream nail or dreamscape the nail projects us to. This links back to the crystal peak in the City of Tears neatly. All those bugs, I assume, are walking dead. The guardsmen certainly are. They're described as zombies several times. Perhaps this dreamscape is linked to these bugs somehow, preserving their spirit while the light enslaves it? 
This checks out with the Dream False Knight fight. Back to Bucks and Bugbait. Why is she out there? Is there a taboo? Are they banished? Why are they not all eight-legged as arachnids should be? Seriously, I had an in-depth taxonomical discussion with my brother about this. It's a big problem. Yes, some spiders have six legs. Beside that point, what are they doing down here? And what in the name of all that is holy is this thing? Okay, so my idea is that the big bucks and bug babe made a deal to lock away the door thing. The egg. Very obvious. A brown marbled stink bug could figure that one out in about two seconds. But why? Well, young people, kind beneficent, oodled oodler, because the egg contains the light. It could be a doorway to the surface, or maybe the light is a brainwashing plague, or perhaps the egg is a doorway to the dreamscape and it needed to be shut to preserve everyone. Big Bucks and Bug Babe, with the other two mask bros, decided, screw that mess, hid themselves away with the keys, and put themselves in a coma to avoid their mind's death using whatever magic the dream nail harnesses. By doing this, they guaranteed the fall of Halidas because they were big important in the community, and everyone died afterward. I have very little clue what happened to the king. I assume he died too. How useful can kings be after all? All of this is absent the role of soul, the magic milk I suck from my foes. The soul sanctum is a whole other analysis that I flat out do not have the lore for. It's a mystery. Generally, I think the soul force is what animates the body, while the dreamscape is what animates the spirit, or the mind. I also have a question about my transition to playing Avatar the Last Airbender, but if he was a bug. Was I supposed to dissolve this thing into Geo, or what? Limarma, you feel them? Also, what the hell is Geo? Theorize that it's skewt or feces or some kind of amalgamate substance in episode 1, but now I can't figure out why it'd be stored in pods like the Deep Nest inhabitants do. It's also embedded in the walls of the City of Tears. You know the, uh, the large portions of Geo? It kind of looks like that, so maybe the Geo's in the cliff face. Is it the purest form of currency, food? Anyway, Thanks for listening to my rant. It is undoubtedly flawed in some way, but let me play the game or I'll be sad to be lore spoiled. Stay froggy, and I'll see you in the next one.